Cornwall has a rich and vibrant fishing industry, catching the widest variety of fish species in the UK. We want to see this wonderful heritage continue to flourish into the future. Over the past half a century, there has been a dramatic shift in our fishing industry as technologies advance. Fishing boats can now travel farther, stay at sea for longer and ultimately catch more fish. But what effect does this increased efficiency have on the state of our seas and how can we manage that impact? Any fishing activity will have some impact on the environment. The key is to identify those types of fishing which are the least damaging and to support the most sustainable practices. To understand these effects, we need to assess the health of the target fish population, any unwanted or accidental species caught, known as bycatch, and the extent of the damage to the wider ocean habitat. In this video, we will explore six different fishing methods and their differing impacts. High impact. Oceanic longlining. Oceanic longlining can involve lines stretching through the water for lengths of up to 130 kilometers, holding thousands of baited hooks. These lines are used to catch high value species such as tuna and swordfish. Sadly, this method can result in accidental bycatch of vulnerable species like albatross, turtles and sharks. Scallop dredging. Most types of dredging can have a highly damaging impact on fragile seafloor communities, causing harm to long-lived and slow-growing species which are often slow to recover. As a result, many scallop dredging operations are considered to be highly damaging to the environment. Medium impact. Bottom trawling. Bottom trawling, although generally lower impact than long lining and scallop dredging, can still negatively impact the marine environment. By dragging a heavy net along the seabed, bottom trawling has the potential to cause damage to fragile seabed habitats and, like long lining, can also accidentally bycatch many unwanted fish species. Gill netting. Gill netting involves leaving nets suspended in the water, either on or above the seabed. This can result in high levels of bycatch, particularly of seabirds as they become entangled in the nets and drown. Low impact. Crab and lobster potting. Potting for crab and lobster is a fantastic, sustainable fishing method. In terms of uh, impact on the seabed, Potting is, is pretty minimal. I mean, you've only got the footprint of the pot that's touching and, and the rope between the pots. Pots are baited and left to soak on the seabed overnight. They are then hauled back into the boat one at a time and the catch is immediately sorted. Any undersized lobsters or bycatch is quickly returned to the water with a good chance of survival. Handlining. Handlining is another traditional method with a very low environmental impact. In Cornwall, this method is often used to catch mackerel and pollock. Hooks with feather lures are jigged up and down in the water and feeding mackerel bite onto them. Undersized fish can be quickly returned to the water. There is almost no habitat damage and bycatch is rare. There are lots of fishermen who want to do their bit for the environment so that they can continue fishing for generations to come. As fishing technology advances, so too do the ways to mitigate for the damage that it can cause. This creates an exciting opportunity to promote the most sustainable fisheries, giving credit to the fishermen trying to do the right thing. As a general rule, smaller, more traditional fishing methods tend to be more sustainable than those operating on a larger, more industrial scale. So what can be done to improve these more damaging practices? Longlining can be improved by adding bird scaring streamers or weighted lines which sink more quickly to reduce seabird bycatch. Modified circle hooks also reduce turtle deaths by up to 90%. Scallop dredges can be limited to the size and number of dredges per boat and by restricted zones. Lime Bay in Dorset has excluded scallop dredging completely to protect fragile reef habitats. In trawling nets, 
Square mesh escape panels allow juveniles and smaller fish to escape, reducing bycatch of fish which are still too young to breed. Pingers can be attached to gill nets, which make a high-pitched sound to scare poor poison dolphins away. While seasonal bylaws are in place in Cornwall to temporarily stop gill netting if seabird bycatch becomes too high. The extent to which a fishery impacts on the environment is clearly complex and varies greatly with different fishing methods. As consumers, you are in a powerful position to support sustainability because your choices drive the market demand. Ask at restaurants, fishmongers and supermarkets where they get their seafood from and how it was caught. Look out for recommendations by sustainable seafood schemes such as the Cornwall Good Seafood Guide and Marine Stewardship Council Blue Tick.